Hello, and welcome to our conversation today. Don't adjust your sets. We are coming to you in color. Today, I have my good friend and colleague, Jonas. Jonas, how are you doing today? Hey, Amar, it's, it, I'm doing amazing. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. It's my first time with Fortinet Life. And uh, yeah, I'm ha very happy to join you. And whenever we do something together, it's always fun. So thanks for having me. We always run into some unexpected and interesting things, I would say, when we team up. Um, today, I'm glad you're here because I wanted to answer a question that I know me and you hear often, where people ask us, how do you get started in cybersecurity or tell us about your career? So Jonas, I want to kick it off right to you. Tell, tell me a little bit about what you do at Fortinet, at FortiGuard Labs, and tell me a little bit about your career and how you got here. Yeah, sure. So I'm part of the research department at FortiGuard Labs, actually working as a security strategist. And it has been quite a ride for me in Fortinet. I joined in 2016 uh, back in Europe, actually in Switzerland, where I was born, and I uh, had the opportunity to move inside the company, relocate to Singapore, um, applied at a different role. And yeah, I'm working now with the, with the analyst, with the researcher, and as a strategist, uh, a lot about strategy in general with the customers understanding how the, the bad guys operate and then um, coming up with a good strategy to make the whole environment uh, better and more secure. Ah, that's amazing. You know, when I think about my own career, I remember I was always into computers when I was a little kid. I remember when I was like like seven, eight years old, my dad got me a computer and uh, I had no idea what to do with it. So I used to go to the library and get programming books and learn how to do programming. I always enjoyed breaking things. <laughs> like, I mean, that was my thing is how, how do things really break? And I think that's how I migrated into cybersecurity. And, uh, you know, I started off my career in networking and uh, kind of taking the whole uh, networking router path and then getting into wireless networks and then getting into like security which was a big thing always and uh, ended up here at Fortinet at FortiGuard Labs as a threat researcher basically figuring out how attackers um, do their attacks what's the motivation behind them what are the techniques behind them and uh, you know you do uh, you do a little bit of the same thing what does like a researcher actually do from day to day from your perspective like what is your job from day to day if you're going, going to describe it well, there's not really a day-to-day. -day. Every day is different, and I think that's the beauty of our our job. So, I, I truly uh, believe when I say I think uh, we have probably the best job in in whole Fortinet. I mean, we we truly do what we love to do, and um, as you mentioned in the beginning, um, it's something which we have been doing for all, almost all of our life. We have been using computers. We try to figure out how to use the computers. Sometimes not to do what they're supposed to do, more like to do what we want them to do. And uh, I think this is a little bit the, the mindset you got to have sometimes to to succeed in, in these kind of environments. So, yeah, coming back to your question, um, a, a normal day, if you can call it normal, is it's um, it's working close with all our friends from the research department because the, the beauty about our job is it, it's not something we can achieve by ourselves. It's a lot of teamwork. It's a lot of collaborating with, for example, analysts who do some really hard work on the on the debugger side. And even there, you have so many different attack vectors these days that the sophistication is is increasing dramatically. So we need to understand the, the whole environment. And it, it's a lot of collaboration with the analysts, but also with uh, techno while technology involves, it's important to keep up with, uh, for example, machine learning. And um, I, I see it as a, I, I really appreciate it, having the opportunity to talk with some of the best guys in the artificial intelligence field and learn from them about the cutting edge technologies. And in the end, bring all of these buckets together and, and, and develop strategies which, um, which are then be, be able to, to make the whole environment uh, better and more secure. Yeah, no, I think you summed it up perfectly. I, I I look at us as threat hunters in the real sense of that word. A lot of times, like, you know, some of my job is where people will come to me and say, like, listen, I came across, the, across this new attack that we hadn't seen before. What is this attack? And, you know, I have to research. I have to say, oh, well, 
well, you're seeing the end part of this attack, but I really need to find the beginning of this attack to really understand it. And where did that happen? Oh, did it happen in your email? Let me let me figure out which email box that it happened to. Did it come from an attachment? Uh, it might have been an Excel file. Like, how did the attack actually get embedded for the Excel file? We we know like attacks happen through macros and other places, but but what's different about this one? And then of course I have to bring in like other people expertise. Uh, just even recently, that exact same situation happened, and I remember coming, uh, you know, going to another colleague on our team, Fred, who you know really well, one of our top malware researchers. He's like, wow, this uses a hidden technique that's not really used that often. And uh, let's let's go ahead and make sure not only do we catch this, but let's go ahead and work with our development teams and our AI teams to make sure we understand that logic behind those attacks. And that's, you know, that's just one of the things out of a hundred things we have to work on every day. Yeah, now, and I think one one point which which I truly enjoy as well is the whole training part. So you and myself, we we love offensive security as well. So having the understanding about how the the bad guys operate, and we use this kind of knowledge to to train our customers, our partners, and increase the whole awareness. Because I truly believe that if you want to succeed in defense, you need to understand offense as well. And understanding these kind of attacks and being up to date with current techniques. And tactics is something which which changes every single day, which um, makes our life so exciting. Yeah, absolutely. And speaking of training and just speaking of that journey, I know both of you and me believe really, really heavily in the education piece and continuing to learn all the time. Uh, we both have multiple certifications. I think uh, you just completed your CISSP, uh, OSCP. Uh, tell me a little bit about like, the certifications that you think are important in your job and to, that makes you better or more credible. Yeah, so certifications are an interesting topic because for me, it's not about just uh, passing a certification. Usually, I believe that there are some certifications out there which have a really good roadmap and truly challenge you. Sometimes you, at least for myself, it helps to, to put myself into a spot where I'm like, hey, I'm signing up for this certification in three months and now it's uh, putting my foot on the gas and do whatever I can to to achieve and, and pass this, um, the certification in the end. And this is something which, which helps during the process to put a little bit of extra pressure on it. But in the end, it's, it's not the, the most important part is not whether you pass or fail in the end. I think the, the path is the goal, the, the learning the new things every single day. And um, I remember it pretty well while, while doing it. Very often you get stuck, you get frustrated, and then you start to think a little bit different. You reach out to other people who give you a different point of view. And again, it's a lot about collaboration. And it's a beautiful thing about the whole InfoSec community where everyone is so helpful. There's so much information um, on the internet. So I truly believe it's uh, certifications can help, but it's, in my opinion, not the a requirement, a hard requirement that uh, without the certification, you're not possible to do what we do. Actually, I know some of the best researchers I know um, out there, they never really did any of the certifications because all they do is something which they truly love and have a passion for. And I believe in the end, this is the most important part when it comes to the, to succeed in this environment. Yeah, you know, right before uh, this uh, this conversation, I was looking at the certifications I've gone over the years, and uh, you know, there was there was literally, literally over a hundred of them. When I when I started off, uh, I was doing things like A plus and uh, to learn about hardware, the MCSE back in the time for Microsoft certifications, multiple Cisco certifications, which were a big deal back then. Uh, and a lot of them, like I don't use every day in my career, but it helps me. Like I mean, I have a solid understanding of systems, on networking, on uh, Active Directory, on programming, on my 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 development certifications, I always use certifications, as you said, as a roadmap to like figure out what is a good position for me to learn, what is a good path for me to go down. What I love about today is that there's so much training available that's directly in cybersecurity. If I was doing it today, I might uh, do a little different path uh, just because you can get so much focused on cybersecurity. You know, one of the things that I love is our NSC program at training.fortinet.com. And, and I love that because like, like you can get a lot of our training for free that goes into a lot of detail. But even just the basic NSC1 program, um, it's security awareness. I actually have everyone go through that. I have like my my nieces who are in high school go through that. I had my mom actually sit through that. And she finally told me, 
hey, I get it. I get it when a stranger calls me up on the phone. I shouldn't be I shouldn't be giving my personal information. And that security awareness training is is awesome. Of course, it goes into a lot more deeper. You should go above uh, above the security awareness and go into go into the more advanced trainings. And I love things like hacks the box. It's a it's a free site or it can be free site. And to get access to that, you need to hack the website just to get access to that. There's just so many resources with YouTube, with GitHub, with other resources that make training where you don't have to have a paper certificate to uh, be credible, but you can learn great information. Yeah, I have actually one uh, one quite fun, uh, funny story. So since I've moved to, to Singapore, I'm really trying to learn Mandarin. And there's this uh, certification path, which uh, which you can do as well. So it's like these language certifications. And I remember it pretty well. Um, it helps me, again, to put a little bit of, of pressure on a certain date. So you really study a lot because otherwise, yeah, it's pretty hard to pick up a language. But then I was like, after almost a year, I was like, okay, let's do this. Let's go for the, the second certification. So the second slowest one, which is still pretty basic. But I was like, okay, uh, let's give it a shot. So I was like full of self-confidence. And I walked into this uh, school district. I went into the room. I watched left and right. And, you know, everyone around me was like 10 to 11 years old. And I felt like the... The, the, the old schoolmate who, who failed class like a couple of rounds and now uh, is surrounded by, by the young guns. So, um, yeah, sometimes it's, it's just funny coincidences in life. And, uh, and again, it, it shows you're never too old to, to pick up a new skill. And um, if you really dedicate time to it and, and have fun while doing it. Sounds like a humbling experience. I think it's amazing that you moved from uh, from Switzerland to uh, Singapore uh, to get a job in threat hunting as a threat researcher. Um, tell me a little bit about that, and what's the next step for you? What's the next step in your career, and and how are you going to get there? Yeah. So first of all, I truly appreciate the opportunities inside a global corporation. So when I joined in 2016, even during the interview processes, I told my old managers back then, hey, my long term plan is to go abroad. Um, I'm not really sure where I want to go, but it's something I have on my mid to long term roadmap. And um, while being in the company and growing with the company, I realized that we have amazing opportunities inside the company. So um reading through the different job uh, profiles uh, i saw the position which then uh, which i'm working for right now and, and i rem remember it pretty well where uh, i applied for this position and i had my very first interview with you or more where uh, it was a unique interview so um i will never forget that uh, the rest of my life for sure but um yeah when i arrived here in, uh, in asia pacific it's like a complete new world for me and uh, I, I truly appreciate this opportunity inside a company to, to move and as you mentioned, um, you, you've seen it as well. You have uh, worked at so many different places all over the world. Uh, gaining these kind of experiences, not only on the technical side, because there's so much other uh, factors involved, like politics, like uh, like cultures, and um, being able to adapt is something which which we not only need to do in cybersecurity. It's, it's something which we need to do generally in life. We need to understand the surroundings and then have a plan to to make sure we we fit in well and. Um, yeah, the one funny, funny story which uh, which I can share is, I think in the third week when I arrived here, I decided to to pick up Mandarin and uh, had a, a new teacher. So I met her the first time here. She, she's Chinese, and you know, in Europe, when when you do your homework and you you're like 70, 80 percent sure you you got it, then you're quite happy about yourself, and everyone's like, yeah, yeah, good job, Jonas. But um, I remember pretty well after uh, the first or second homework when I met her. I failed with some of the vocabulary. I maybe had like 60, 70 percent right. And, you know, I will never forget that the rest of my life. We did it online uh, because of uh, COVID. And she looked deep into the webcam. She took off her glasses and she was like, Jonas, if you don't learn the vocabulary, we can stop right now. I can teach you anything. But if you don't prepare for these classes, it doesn't make sense to continue. And I was like, oh, my God, this is like a completely new experience. It's uh, I felt like I prepared decent, but as you can imagine, uh, different environments, different people, different expectations. And uh, that's the beauty about life, um, interacting with a lot of different people. Um, so I truly appreciate this opportunity. And uh, from here on, uh, let's see how it goes. As I mentioned at the beginning, I'm, I'm very happy where I am right now. I appreciate working with all these uh, excellent people around me. And um, you're one of the reasons why, why I truly enjoy my job every single day. So thanks a lot for that as well, Amor.
Uh, that that is a great story. Uh, that is a funny story. I'm glad you shared that. It does remind me a lot about cybersecurity. You know, one of my personal, uh, uh, I would say, um, sayings that I say to myself is uh, basically, you got to keep on moving. Uh, also <laughs> reminds me of a nice song. But I, I think that that is really about cybersecurity is learning how to adapt. Um, don't get set in your ways. I think that is sometimes I see some of the biggest challenges people have in their career, especially when they're successful or if, or if they have been successful successful at something. When I, when I first started off, uh, you know, from basic networking, right, people were uh, getting on a terminal screen, uh, configuring a router. You don't do that anymore. Uh, people used to put in like firewall rules. You don't really do that anymore. Everything's about automation, learning about like, uh, you know, things like like Python, learning uh, things uh, on how to uh, use AI systems. It's uh, things change, technology changes because the demand that the businesses have, demand that the world has changes, and you have to be flexible enough to do that and as you said always understand and always be humble on on uh, there are things you're going to have to learn and that's what makes things exciting jonas it was wonderful talking to you today i really enjoyed your stories hopefully we gave some people some good career tips some good career advice to, uh, so uh and we're always around on our blogs and our social media channels if uh, anyone wants to reach out to us but uh once again it was great great talking to you today it was so great to be here. And uh, again, as we do a lot of these collaborations on different platforms, so I'm sure we will hit the, another one soon. And uh, this one was fun again. So thanks a lot for that, Demar. All right. Hey, thanks again.